Slide 12. A neutron in a reactor makes an elastic head-on collision with the nucleus of an atom initially at rest. Assume the mass of the atomic nucleus is about 11.1 .1 times the mass of the neutron. What fraction of the neutron's kinetic energy is transferred to the atomic nucleus? So let's uh, set up our picture here. We have a neutron, which I'm going to say has mass m, and it is traveling with some initial velocity, and it will encounter this neutron, which has 11.1 .1 times the mass of the neutron. 11.1 .1 times m is what this looks like. So this is before the collision. After the collision, because this neutron is more massive, it will travel continuing forward with some initial with some final velocity. What I'll say is v2. Oh, and this is before collision. This will be after collision. But because this is 11.1, uh, it's so much more massive than the other one. This smaller neutron mass, it's probably going to move away with some final velocity in the negative direction. And to get the fraction of the neutron's kinetic energy transferred to this atomic nucleus, we're going to use both conservation of energy, which should be zero. The, the change in kinetic energy for an elastic collision is zero. Just like for any collision, the change in momentum is zero. So starting from K, delta KE is zero. That means that KE final minus KE initial equals zero. Or KE final equals KE initial. Same thing. Okay, I will sub into the KE final equals KE initial, and I will use equations for potential or for kinetic energy. Kinetic energy of the nucleus, one half times 11.1 .1 times the mass of a neutron times what I'm saying V2 squared. So this is the nucleus's final kinetic energy plus the neutron's final kinetic energy M times V1 that's going in the negative direction. I square that will equal the initial kinetic energy. The only object that had kinetic energy before the collision was the neutron. That's one half times m times v initial squared. I can cancel all the one halves and all the m's. They cancel out because it's the same all the way across. And now I have 11.1 .1 times v2 squared plus v1 squared equals v initial squared. I have three terms. So what I want is I want to get rid of this v1. I want to write it in terms of v2 and the initial velocity. So to do that, I will now use conservation of momentum equation. Delta p is equal to zero, which means p final equals the initial momentum. The, the final momentum of the two, we had that little neutron moving away in the negative direction with some velocity. So I'm saying negative m times v1 plus 11.1 .1 times m times v2. And that should equal the mass of the neutron by itself times its initial velocity. Again, all these m's, they cancel. So I have negative v1 plus 11.1 .1 times v2 is equal to v initial. I will add v1 to both sides, subtract v initial from both sides. So I say 11.1 .1 times v2 minus v initial is equal to v1. This I can now sub in for my v1 up here. Where am I? I'm going to sub into this equation for v1. Eleven point one times v two squared plus eleven point one times v two minus v initial. This will square. I will square this. This is equal to v initial squared. Can I make a little more space? Here. Oh, I 
and hopefully fun. Okay, I'm gonna end up foiling this out. Eleven point one times v two squared plus first if I square this eleven point one squared, which is let me get my calculator. So yes, I'm going to foil that fraction out. So or foil this um, not fraction foil out this set of parentheses first outer inner last. So I have eleven point one times v two minus v initial. We're going to square that so. First term would be 11.1 squared, which is 123.21 V2 squared minus outer inner. So this will end up being minus 22.2 times V2 times V initial minus plus V initial squared is equal to V initial squared. So all I did is I took this set of parentheses and I foiled it. Oops, it also includes this. So this is what I foiled out. Okay, now I'm going to try to combine some like terms. So 11.1 plus 123. So this will be 134.31 V2 squared minus 22.2 times V2 times V initial plus V initial squared is equal to V initial squared. So I can take those away and I'm going to add the 22.2 V2 times V initial to both sides. So this will be 134. 0.31 v2 squared is equal to 22.2 times v2 times v initial. I will divide by v2 on both sides. So v2 equals 22.2 divided by 134.31 times v initial. So now I know what the final speed of the neutron nucleus is in terms of the initial speed of the neutron. This is helpful for me because they want a ratio of the initial kinetic energy of the neutron divided by the final kinetic energy of the nucleus. So they want the ratio of Ke initial divided by Ke final for the nucleus. So to get that ratio, I'm going to plug this in for the initial kinetic energy of my nucleus. That was one half times for my neutron, sorry, one half times the mass of the neutron times the V initial squared for the neutron. You divide that by one half times 11.1 .1 times M times 22.2 over 134.31 times V initial squared. Scroll down a little bit here. Sorry, let me make some space while you're copying that. You'll see that things will start to cancel now quite nicely. The one halves will cancel. M's cancel. And even the initial velocity squareds will cancel. So what this ratio, this Ke initial divided by the Ke final, this is now 1 divided by 11.1 times quantity 22.2 divided by 134.31 squared. I'm going to plug this into the calculator like so. Okay, so like this, we have our calculator, and we're um, uh, actually they want <laughs> they want the ratio of Ke final divided by Ke initial, so I need to actually flip this upside down. My apologies. I'm going to, they, they want Ke final. What's the ratio of, let me double check. What's the ratio of the neutron's kinetic energy? What fraction of the neutron's kinetic energy is transferred to the atomic nucleus? Okay, my bad. This, it doesn't matter. Okay, we, I can still set it up like this, and then we just need to invert this at the end. 
Uh, my bad. Actually, what they want is a ratio of KE final divided by KE initial. So I'm just going to invert this. So it's going to become 11.1 .1 times 22.2 .2 divided by 134.31 squared. You'd expect that the final kinetic energy should be a smaller number than the initial kinetic energy. And we should that should be reflected when we plug this in. Okay, sorry. 11.1 .1 times quantity 22.2 .2 divided by 134.31 squared. And I get this ratio of 0 0.3035257. Five, whatever. Okay. So that's how you do part one. I know it's very long. Sorry, I flipped this fraction upside down, but this is where we end up. Okay, and then for part two, let's see. We should get a decimal number for part one. For part two, if the initial kinetic energy of the neutron is this, find its final kinetic energy. Okay, 100% of the energy of the kinetic energy is the Ke initial. So this represents 100% of the kinetic energy. This number represents the proportion of Ke transferred to the nucleus. So they want the remaining proportion that was transferred to the neutron. So to get the proportion that was transferred to the neutron, you will take 100% or 1. So this is for the next part. I'll change the color here. Okay, I made some space for part 2. You take 1 minus your answer for part 1. In this case, it was 0 0.303 ish and this is the proportion that of the total energy that's left over for the nucleus or for the neutron at the end 1 minus 3.03 .03, that's 0 0.697 or 69.7 percent of ke transferred to neutron post collision so I'll take that Ke initial that is given in part two, and I will multiply it by this proportion, by 0 0.697, or whatever your proportion is. So that Ke initial they give you times uh, 1 minus your answer from part one will give you your Ke final for the neutron. Okay, I know this was a long one, but thank you for watching. If you have any questions, come in for tutorials.